Alrighty, so moving along with our development process, in this video we'll cover steps five and six of updating our product service and also updating the HTML page. Alrighty, so remember earlier I said, hey, um, this get product method, it doesn't exist yet, we'll declare it in the next video. Well, this is the video and we'll actually declare it now. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's zoom in here and we'll make use of the IDE and we'll tell it to declare the method get product. All right, so that takes care of that one issue. Okay, so now for step five, we're actually gonna update our product service to call the URL on the Spring Boot application. So I'll move over here into my product service. And we see right here at the beginning, they have that method that was just declared, the get product. Let me just cut this for a second and just move it down to where the regular methods are. Drop it in here. Alrighty, so there's my get product method, just a template right now or a placeholder. I'll set up the return type of observable product because we're gonna return one product. And so the first thing I need to do is build the URL based on the product ID. So for example, this would be localhost 8080 slash API slash products one, two, or whatever that actual product ID is. And remember, we get this endpoint out of the box with Spring Data REST. There's no additional coding or configuration required on the Spring Boot side. And then we simply call the REST API based on this product URL. And that's the basic coding here for the get product method in the service. Okay, so let's go ahead and swing back to our project here and let's open up the file product details component.html. And so this is for step six of updating the HTML page for the product details component to actually display the product details. Because right now we simply have the stock placeholder here. We need to give some real information. All right, so instead of that hard-coded item here of product details works, we're gonna say product name. So now once we run this, we should see the actual product name for each product when we select the actual details. So let me just get my application up and running again. Okay, back in the browser, select one of my products here. And this is great. So that's the product name, Crash Course in Python. Good, good. And let's try one more. So the beginner's guide, nah, I'll try the JavaScript cookbook. Excellent, great. So now we know the actual product name is being displayed on the product details page. And this even works with our other categories like coffee mug for sweeper. Okay, I'm happy. We're making some really good progress. Now we just have to add some more details to the page and we'll cover that in the next video.